Hey everyone, welcome back. Today, we're gonna do a uh, deep dive into Lido DAO. Okay. A cryptocurrency token making some serious waves in the world of Ethereum staking. Yeah. So you might be thinking, okay, another crypto token. Yeah. What's the big deal? Right. Well, Lido's doing something uh, pretty revolutionary. It lets you earn staking rewards on your Ethereum without locking it up for a fixed period. So that's right. You get the benefits of staking and the flexibility to use your ETH in other ways. It's no wonder Lido's staking over a third of all ETH oh, wow. on Ethereum's beacon chain. A third. But you know, with great power comes, well, questions, concerns, maybe even a little healthy skepticism. Mm. So we're going to unpack both the exciting potential and the potential risks of using Lido. So Lido offers a solution to a problem that many potential stakers face. Traditionally, okay. you needed 32 ETH to become a validator on Ethereum, which is a barrier to entry for most people. Right. Lido changes the game by allowing you to stake any amount of ETH. Okay, so I can stake, let's say, one ETH yep. and still earn rewards. How does that work? When you deposit your ETH into Lido, you receive Steeth in return. Think of it like a receipt that represents your staked ETH. But here's the kicker. Stith isn't just some static receipt. It's a liquid token that you can use in other decentralized finance or DeFi protocols. So I could use my Stith as collateral for loan or even lend it out to earn interest. That sounds almost too good to be true. It's definitely an exciting opportunity, and it's one of the key reasons behind Lido's popularity. It unlocks a whole new world of possibilities for ETH holders who want to earn passive income and participate in the DeFi ecosystem. But let's address the elephant in the room. Centralization. Okay. Lido controls a significant portion of the staked ETH. Right. Which some people argue is a threat to Ethereum's decentralization. Yeah. What's your take on that? It's a valid concern. The beauty of blockchain technology is its decentralized nature, and it's crucial to preserve that. However, I think it's important to remember that Lido is a DAO, a decentralized autonomous organization. This means that control is distributed among LDO token holders who can vote on key decisions affecting the protocol. It's not a single entity calling all the shots. So it's more like a community governed system. Exactly. And Lido is actively exploring ways to further decentralize its operations, such as implementing distributed validator technology, which spreads the responsibility of validating transactions across a larger network of operators. That sounds promising. But what about the risk of slashing penalties? I've heard that if Lido validators misbehave, Steeth holders could be penalized. It's true that slashing is a risk inherent in any staking system, including Lido. However, Lido has implemented several safeguards to minimize this risk. First, they have a rigorous vetting process for node operators, ensuring they meet high standards of technical expertise and security. Second, they've implemented a slashing insurance fund to help cover potential losses. Okay, so there are measures in place to protect users. But let's be realistic. No system is foolproof. There's always some level of risk involved. Absolutely. And that's why it's crucial to do your own research, understand the risks, and never invest more than you can afford to lose. Sound advice. Before we dive deeper to the technical aspects of Lido, I have to remind everyone about something pretty amazing. Make sure you visit BrianGarvin.com, that's Brian with an I, uh. and get your free affiliate guide titled 10 Steps to Becoming a Super Affiliate. Over 12,300 words of life-changing information. Simply submit your name and email and click the verification link sent to your email address. The link for this is in Brian's YouTube bio. Now back to Lido. One of the things that makes it so intriguing is the upcoming Shanghai upgrade on Ethereum. This upgrade will enable withdrawals of staked ETH from the beacon chain. So what does that mean for Lido? Will everyone rush to withdraw their staked ETH? There's a possibility of some short-term volatility as some stakers choose to cash out. However, the long-term implications of the Shanghai upgrade are actually very positive for Lido. You see, the ability to withdraw staked ETH makes it a more attractive investment for institutional investors who were previously hesitant due to the lockup period. Ah, so it removes a barrier to entry and could potentially bring a flood of new capital into the Ethereum ecosystem. That's a big deal. It is. And Lido is well positioned to benefit from this influx of institutional interest. They've already established themselves as a leader in the liquid staking space, and their reputation for security and reliability is attracting attention from major players. It's like they're building the infrastructure for the future of Ethereum staking. Precisely. And it's not just about Ethereum. Lido is expanding its reach to other proof-of-stake blockchains like Solana, Polygon, and Kusama. They're building a truly multi-chain liquid staking platform. Wow, they're thinking big. But Lido isn't the only player in the liquid staking game, right? 
there's competition out there. Of course. One notable competitor is Rocket Pool, a decentralized protocol that focuses heavily on decentralization and mitigating slashing risks. How does Rocket Pool approach things differently from Lido? Rocket Pool distributes staking power more evenly across a larger network of independent node operators. This helps to address the centralization concerns that some people have with Lido. They also have a unique bonding mechanism that provides additional protection against slashing penalties. So it sounds like they're doubling down on decentralization and security. It's interesting to see different approaches to liquid staking emerging. It shows that this space is still evolving and there's a lot of innovation happening. Absolutely. It's a dynamic and exciting time to be following the development of liquid staking solutions. And it's clear that Lido is playing a leading role in shaping the future of this space. This is getting really fascinating. Before we move on to part two of our Lido deep dive, let me remind you about something special. Make sure you visit BrianGarvin.com, that's Brian with an I. His free affiliate guide, 10 Steps to Becoming a Super Affiliate, is pure gold. Over 12,300 words of insightful tips and strategies, all completely free. All you need to do is enter your name and email address on the site, click the verification link in your email, and you're good to go. Check the link in his YouTube bio to get started. All right, in part two, we'll take a closer look at how Lido actually works behind the scenes and delve into the technical intricacies that make it all tick. So we covered uh, the basics. Lido lets you earn those staking rewards on your ETH without locking it up. Right. Opening up a whole world of DeFi possibilities. Yeah. But how does this magic actually happen? Yeah, I'm curious about that behind the scenes action. Okay. What happens when I deposit my ETH with Lido? Okay. Does it just sit in a digital vault somewhere? Not at all. Your ETH is actively put to work by a network of node operators. Yeah. Think of them as the validators who keep the Ethereum blockchain running smoothly. They're responsible for processing transactions and adding new blocks to the chain. Okay, so Lido connects me with these node operators. But how do they choose who to work with? It's not like just anyone can become a validator, right? Right. Lido has a rigorous vetting process to ensure that node operators meet specific technical requirements and maintain the highest security standards. But here's where it gets really interesting. The selection process isn't centralized. Lido uses on-chain governance, meaning that LDO token holders vote on which node operators to admit to the network. So the Lido community has a say in who gets to participate. That's a pretty cool way to ensure decentralization. Exactly. It's a key part of Lido's philosophy. Now, once your ETH is distributed to these carefully selected node operators, they stake it on the beacon chain, which is the proof of stake chain that runs alongside the main Ethereum chain. Okay. And that's when the rewards start rolling in. And those rewards are reflected in the value of my stith, right? Precisely. Your stuff balance will gradually increase over time, representing the staking rewards you've earned. And the beauty of it is you don't have to do anything. It's all automatic and happens in real time. Now, you mentioned earlier that I can use stiff in other DeFi protocols. Can you give me some examples of what I could actually do with it? Sure. Let's say you want to borrow some other cryptocurrency. You could use your stiff as collateral for a loan, allowing you to access liquidity without selling your state ETH. Or maybe you want to earn even more yield. You could lend out your stuff to others and earn interest on it. There are also decentralized exchanges where you can trade stuff for other tokens. Wow. The possibilities seem endless. It sounds like stuff is a pretty powerful tool for anyone looking to navigate the DeFi landscape. But I have to ask, are there any risks involved in using it in these other protocols? Well, like any DeFi interaction, there are inherent risks to consider. Smart contracts can be vulnerable to bugs or exploits, and there's always the risk of market volatility impacting the value of your assets. It's crucial to do your research and understand the risks before using Steth or any other token in these protocols. So it's the classic crypto mantra, never invest more than you can afford to lose. Right. And always be diligent about security. Exactly. Hmm. Now, one thing you might find interesting is that Lido isn't limited to just Ethereum. They're expanding their liquid staking solutions to other proof-of-stake blockchains as well. Oh, really? Which ones? They're already supporting Solana, Polygon, and Kusama with more on the horizon. They're essentially becoming a one-stop shop for all your liquid staking needs, regardless of which proof-of-stake blockchain you're interested in. That's a pretty ambitious vision. It sounds like they're trying to become the go-to platform for anyone who wants to participate in the future of staking. You could say that. But of course, every ambitious project faces its challenges. Lido is no exception. Okay, let's talk about those challenges. All right. What are some of the hurdles that Lido needs to overcome to achieve its goals? One of the biggest challenges is managing growth while maintaining decentralization. As Lido's user base and staked ETH pool grow, 
it becomes increasingly important to ensure that no single entity gains too much control over the network. That makes sense. It's a classic dilemma in the crypto world, how to scale without sacrificing decentralization. How is Lido addressing this challenge? They're actively exploring solutions like Distributed Validator Technology, or DVT, which allows multiple validators to collaborate on block validation, making it more difficult for any single entity to dominate the network. Imagine it like this. Instead of having one person holding all the keys to a vault, DVT allows a group of people to share responsibility for securing the vault. That's a great analogy. So it's like creating a more distributed and resilient network, yeah. reducing the risk of any single point of failure. Yeah. What other challenges are on Lido's radar? Security is always a top priority. Smart contracts can be complex and even the smallest vulnerability can be exploited. Lido is investing heavily in security audits and bug bounty programs to identify and address any potential weaknesses before they can be exploited. So it's like having a team of white hat hackers constantly testing their defenses, mm -hmm. making sure the system is as secure as possible. Exactly. And then there's the regulatory landscape, which is always a bit of a wild card in the crypto world. It's still unclear how governments around the world will choose to regulate liquid staking solutions like Lido. Yeah, regulatory uncertainty is a challenge for the entire crypto industry. Yeah. How is Lido approaching this issue? They're taking a proactive approach, working with legal experts and policymakers to ensure compliance with existing regulations and advocate for a clear and fair regulatory framework for liquid staking. They understand that regulatory clarity is essential for the long-term success of the industry. It sounds like they're doing everything they can to navigate the complex world of regulations. Mm. It's encouraging to see them taking this seriously. Now, speaking of taking things seriously... I want to know where this is going. You're going to remind everyone about BrianGarvin.com, aren't you? You bet I am. It's such a valuable resource, especially for anyone interested in the world of affiliate marketing. Make sure you visit BrianGarvin.com, that's Brian with an I, and get your free affiliate guide titled 10 Steps to Becoming a Super Affiliate, over 12,300 words of life-changing information. Simply submit your name and email and tell the verification link sent to your email address. The link for this is in Brian's YouTube bio. Okay, okay, we get it. It's a great resource. But seriously, folks, Belito's doing some pretty amazing things in the world of liquid staking. They're pushing the boundaries of what's possible with Ethereum and other proof-of-stake blockchains, and they're addressing the challenges head-on. Absolutely. It's a fascinating journey to witness, and I'm excited to see what the future holds for Lido and the broader liquid staking ecosystem. All right, in part three, we'll wrap up our deep dive by exploring the potential implications of Lido for the future of DeFi and the entire blockchain landscape. Mm -hmm. Stay tuned. So we've explored like all the ins and outs of Lido, right? Mm -hmm. From its approach to liquid staking to the challenges it faces mm -hmm. in this like crazy, rapidly evolving DeFi landscape. Definitely. But like, what does it all mean for the future? Is Lido just a flash in the pan? Right. Or is it a sign of like bigger things to come? I think Lido is more than just a trend. Yeah. I think it represents a fundamental shift in how we think about participating in proof of stake networks. You know, traditionally, yeah. staking has been this kind of like exclusive club requiring you know significant capital or technical expertise. Mm -hmm. Lido changes the game by making staking accessible to anyone with any amount of ETH. It's like democratizing access to the rewards of securing a blockchain network. Exactly. And that increased participation has a ripple effect. Yeah. It strengthens network security, making it more difficult for malicious actors to like disrupt the system. Yeah. It also fosters greater decentralization, distributing control among a larger group of stakeholders. Solido isn't just about individual gain. Right. It's about strengthening the foundation of the entire ecosystem. Precisely. And I think this has profound implications for the future of DeFi. As more people participate in staking, it unlocks this vast pool of liquidity that can be used to power a wide range of decentralized applications and financial services. So we're talking about a potential explosion of innovation in DeFi. Yeah. Driven by the accessibility and flexibility of liquid staking solutions like Lito. That's the exciting part. We're still in like the early stages of this evolution. Right. But the possibilities are vast. Imagine a world where anyone, regardless of their technical skills or financial resources, can participate in the governance and security of decentralized networks, earn passive income from their crypto holdings, and access a wide range of financial services without relying on those traditional intermediaries. It's a vision of a more inclusive, transparent, and right. empowering financial system. Exactly. 
And Leto is at the forefront of making this vision a reality. Boba. But of course, you know, yeah. challenges remain. Mm -hmm. We've talked about, you know, centralization concerns, mm -hmm. the need for those ongoing security audits, and that like ever present uncertainty around regulations. Right. It's not all sunshine and roses. Yeah. There are real risks and hurdles to overcome. Absolutely. That. But I see these challenges as opportunities for growth and innovation. Lido is actively addressing these concerns, exploring solutions like DVT to further decentralize its operations, investing in security audits and bug bounty programs to strengthen its defenses, and engaging with policymakers to advocate for a clear and supportive regulatory environment. So it's about continuous improvement, adaptation, yep. and a willingness to push the boundaries of what's possible. Precisely. And that's what makes this space so dynamic and exciting. It's not about finding all the answers today, but it's about constantly learning, evolving, and building a better future together. Well said. This has been an incredibly insightful deep dive into Lido DAO. Yeah, it has. We've covered a lot of ground from the basics of liquid staking to the potential implications for the future of DeFi and the entire blockchain landscape. Oh. But as always, our exploration doesn't end here. I encourage you to continue your research, stay informed about the latest developments in the DeFi space, and most importantly, don't be afraid to experiment and get involved. The future of finance is being shaped right now. It is. And your participation matters. And who knows? You might even discover some life-changing opportunities along the way. Speaking of which. Oh, here it comes. One last time, for those in the back, make sure you visit BrianGarvin.com. That's Brian with an I. <laughs> His free affiliate guide. 10 Steps to Becoming a Super Affiliate is packed with over 12,300 words to help you level up your affiliate marketing game. Just enter your name and email on his site, click the verification link sent to your inbox, and you're all set. Find the link in his YouTube bio. All right, we've plugged it enough. But seriously, folks, keep exploring, keep learning, and keep pushing those boundaries of what's possible in the world of decentralized finance. That's a wrap on another deep dive. Until next time, stay curious, stay informed, and keep on diving.